he was a big man and he has left a very large space behind. We try to fill up that space with big pictures and flowers, but the emptiness, his absence, I think is palpable for everyone who shared even a small part of his life. But I still believe that we are not here today to mourn the passing of KPS Gill, but to celebrate a life lived in glory and a life lived to its fullest. He is not just the individual who we have lost. He is an idea. He is the idea that terrorism can be defeated. He is the idea that we must approach this evil consistently, determinedly, and from a strategic perspective. He had a vision that was rooted not in the perspectives of a policeman. Because that is what we most people imagine him to be, a policeman. This was one of the most profound thinkers of our age. And this is something most people are not even aware of. And I will take a moment just to take you to very, very small samplings of some of the writings of a man who encapsulated the most coherent approach and response to terrorism among all counter-terrorist leaders in the world. There is no success that compares to KPS Kill's success. He did not believe in the kind of blind violence that is often practiced by counterterrorism forces. He wrote, however, that we must understand the core significance of coercive force in democracy. And I quote him, democracy and liberalism are not sufficient defense, and this is a fact that the ideologues of freedom need equally to comprehend. There is a fatal flaw in the liberal mind, having established in structure and form, though seldom in substance, a system of governance that corresponds to its conception of democracy. It feels that nothing more needs to be done. The truths of the liberal ideology are, as the American Declaration of the Rights of Man expresses it, self-evident. They require no proof, no reiteration, no defense, certainly no defense by force of arms. Once democracy, or even the ritual of quinquennial elections is established. According to liberal mythology, the mystical, invisible hand keeps everything in place. The superior wisdom of the masses ensures order and justice. This is just so much rubbish. As we should know after living with falsehoods for 50 years now, truth does not triumph unless it has champions to propound it, unless it has armies to defend it. We are living at another time of grave danger. And he wrote also of the gross abuse in, in the context of the Khalistan movement, the gross abuse of the teachings of the gurus and the petty malicious conspiracy for power that inspired this heretical campaign. Of his book, Knights of Falsehood, he wrote, this book to my mind was far more urgent than any analysis of tactics and strategies to counter terrorism, for it addresses a far more grave and insidious danger than any such examination would. That insidious danger was the abuse of religion for political ends. At a personal level, this was a man who never rested. Even in the last years and months of a mind that remained fully alive in a failing body, he never rested. He was constantly on the move. And I remember just a few Months ago, he would always express things most beautifully in poetry that very few would be familiar with. The gems that he would pick out of the vast literature that he was constantly reading. And he quoted this couplet from Punjabi, a language that I do not associate with great poetry normally, but he introduced me to some 
astonishing verse in Punjabi. And he wrote, and he uh, said, Jalda vrikha shamti kha Phir bhi kisi bahar di karda uri kha I am a tree on fire. I will not last the evening. And yet I yearn for the coming spring. This man was the quintessential patriot. He was quintessentially secular. He protected without discrimination people of every faith, every color, every ethnicity. And this man was cheated and betrayed again and again and again. And yet he dis demonstrated the most unparalleled, the most incomprehensible generosity, even towards those who cheated him within politics, within the political fold, within the administration, within his own colleagues, within people who were personally close to him. And when they were in trouble, they would come back to him. And with a completely, to me, un incomprehensible generosity, he would help them again, forgetting everything <coughs> that they had done, all the great harms that they had done to him. I don't think we are here to honor KPS Gill today. He has passed beyond our reach. He is beyond all honor and all denigration, and he received more than a fair share of the latter. All we can do now is struggle to redeem ourselves by honoring the memory of the man who was, without doubt, the greatest warrior India has produced in our age. I will 